Hey y'all, it's Christy from Tea Dottles. And today I'm gonna do a tutorial on how to make my mini maker bag, which will also be a tutorial on how to do a box bottom bag. So first, let me welcome all uh, new subscribers and welcome back subscribers. I'm happy to have you here with me in my maker shenanigans. I do like to do the sewing things, the yarny things, and the DIY things. So you will see a little bit of all of that here on this channel. So um, first and foremost, this is the size that I make my mini maker bags, 10 by 10. Now this is a char, a layer cake, as, as they say. It comes in a 10 by 10 size. They, um, I don't always use a layer cake to make it because they can be more, they can cost more than purchasing by the yard. Okay, but what a layer cake gives you the advantage of is everything's already cut out to 10 by 10. Um, anytime you make a box bottom bag, um, you just got to think about what you want your finished bag size to be and go from there. And I'm going to show you kind of how <laughs> you go about doing that. But, uh, this is called Vintage Adventure. I doubt this is available still. Um, it is something I got from the back quarter shop a while back and it's just sitting on my, on my chill for a little bit so the advantage you get when using a layer cake like I said it's already pre-cut to 10 by 10 and it has one or two of every line every print in a line of fabric okay um, as you can see it says two. usually it has 42 squares it just depends on how many prints are in the line of fabric you can see it, it has the same print in different colors and these are more coordinating prints so you get a bunch of different print you get all the prints from one line of fabric it's pre-cut and it's pre-coordinated um, some people have a problem coordinating fabrics um, that's not an issue I normally have um, I'm pretty good at that um, but this right here it's just a quick way to get a bunch of these bags out and everything coordinates, everything goes together. So I normally lay this out and see uh, what I have going on. For example, I would lay all of these prints out and see how many different colors I have. Um, this gives me a front and back to the bag. I have to have a lining for the bag as well, which will also be 10 by 10. This is upside down. Oop, picked up an extra. Here we go. So, anyway, I would separate them out like this because these are main, these are what I consider main prints in a layer cake, okay? Um, this could potentially be a, a main print as well. I have it in three different colors. Now this would be either an interior or banding because I, I put a banding at the top of these bags. Um, so if I look through here, these prints like this would definitely be interior prints. Probably these for me. And something like this may, could be a banding or interior print. Depends on how many I need. Um, this stripe definitely could be a banding looks like there's only one of each of these and sometimes it, it's like that just like this floral print there's only one of each of those definitely banding prints because I can't get a front and back or an, uh, for an interior um, these I can so let's see I have one two three four five six seven eight nine nine prints I would con consider exterior so I need nine coordinating prints so <clears throat> I'm just going to go through this is a darker pink than this some of them have a lighter pink some of them have a darker pink um, but most of them have this teal this creamy color creamy tan and this pink uh, one has a darker pink background so I need nine I know I have three 
with this print. I have three I can do with this floral print. And then I have three I can do with this. So this is going to work out great. And then I have these prints, which I will use for banding. Now, you can just pick the same color for front and back, or you could do a contrasting one. Um, I do want to keep the same print with the same front print, so the same interior print with the same front print. I don't like this floral with this. There's a lot of floral going on in here already. Uh, so I wouldn't pick this one either for this one. I would probably pick this one because it kind of, I like the balloon and the oval shape and the oval shape here. And I know there's a camper on some of the other ones, but this is the one I would pick for this one. Um, this one is nice. I just, since there are bigger floral pieces on this one I just I prefer this one so then like I said you could put them the same this one has a red so you could do something like this this one is very coordinated <laughs> it's the same color so what I'll probably do is is I will keep this red with this one and I'll put this blue one with the this one uh, it you can't really go wrong with this because this these are all coordinated fabrics so the colors are going to match either way so that that's how I would do that I would have this is my front fabric this is my interior fabric and that's three bags right there okay so I'm gonna stack these together um, that's how I, I coordinate things okay I'm not gonna go through all of the rest of them um, but this is a quick way to get a bunch of these bags out if you want to make a bunch of them at one time. Um, and then I would pick which one. Do I want stripes or do I want uh, floral with this? I'd, I'd pick the stripe for this one. Um, so now with this, you can get, what are these, 10 by 10. My band is, you cut a 3 by 9 piece out so it's nine by nine is what I need and I would get what do I get three is that correct three six nine yes I only get three so I need two per bag so that's gonna mean I'm gonna end up probably with a bag with two different colors since they don't have two of each of these normally they would have two and I could do I wouldn't have to do that but I don't think that would look bad um, because you got the same print. You just have it in two different colors. Just gives it a more of a scrappy look. Okay. Um, and what I could do now, since I don't have two of each, I could mix the floral and the stripe together. And then <clears throat> when I cut them out... I have it already coordinated. I actually would like to have that one with that. This one with this. This has little pink dots in the middle. Um, so, that's something you can do to get to coordinate fabrics. Um, this is just an easy way to do it because you really can't go wrong with it. Um, they all match. So, you could do it however you wanted to. Alright, so now I'm going to clean this stuff up. I'm going to show you how to cut these. Um, Since it's already 10 by 10, that I, I would cut all these all together. Um, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to cut out one uh, with the, the lining so that um, I can show you all how to make it. Okay? With the lining and the banding. So, let's get all this moved out of the way. I would stack these. So, if you're doing this without a layer cake... See if I can move this camera up a little bit. That 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 helps. Um, if you're doing this and you're not making a layer, doing it with a layer cake, then you would cut out 10 inch squares. You need two 10 inch squares for the front, two 10 inch squares for the back for this one. All right. I'm just gonna lay this right like this. 
I do stack uh, things together. Now, when I was doing my club, I made a bunch of these at one time. I would do 10 of these at one time and I would trace it. I use these acrylic rulers. These are ones I got from Arteza. Um, I'll put a link down below for you. They have sets of them. It's a really great price and they're really great ones. I do put a dot, this little dot on this corner because this ruler is a half inch. It's four and a half inches. So the half inch is on this side. So I know I would put this here and that way I know that I'm getting my measurement correct because over here it would have an extra half an inch in it, okay? Um, but I would take a tailor's chalk and I would put this on here and just mark it on the top piece of fabric. And I'll take some very sharp uh, hinge scissors and cut through all of the layers at one time. That's just a quick way to do that without having to uh, go through and cut every single one of these. Um, I'm gonna have to pause for just a second so I can get my rotary cutter. Okay, now I have my rotary cutter. I actually got actually got this from Arteza as well. It They have great rotary cutters and um, they have really great price on the blades. So I'll put links down that for that down below. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut a two inch square out of the bottom of this. This is how I make my box bottom. Um, so that's gonna leave me, since this is a 10 by 10 square, that's gonna leave me with an eight, uh, eight, eight inch tall bag. And since you have to have two off of each side, it'll actually be six inches this way, but it'll be about four inches deep because I'm taking two inches off. You gotta account for the seam and everything. So um, a fun way to do this, if you're trying to figure out what size bag you wanna do, um, if you lay it out on a grid like this and you can fold under two inches like this, and then you can take your two inches here and you can kind of see uh, what your bag's gonna look at like, okay? Because at the top, you will have the drawstring so it can open out wider than the bottom. So this is how you can kind of see if that's the size of the bag you want. Uh, so I have different sizes for all my bags, but this is just the mini maker bag. I'm not doing the club anymore and I'm gonna still put some in the shop. These will go in the shop. Um, but it's just an easy bag to show y'all how to do box bottom bags. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to line it up. Got my little, that's actually a gripper too. It helps grip to the mat and I'm going to cut. Now I don't go all the way to the corner because I don't want to cut through my fabric. I'm going to have to take scissors to do that, which is why when I did a bunch of them, I marked it with chalk and just cut it with scissors so I didn't have to do two things. And I gotta get my scissors now. You would think I'd be prepared for this, but you know, that that's not me. <laughs> I just decided to do a video and then I just do it sometimes. Even when I think I'm prepared, I don't have everything. Don't worry if that's not completely straight. Um, there we go. So now I got my corners cut. And these little corners, I showed y'all in a video the other day how to do a zipper tab pull. So I save those. You can save them for quilts. You can save them for all kinds of things. I do not throw those away. All right. So now I'm going to put my lining face to face, my fabrics face to face, print side together. I'm going to go over to, oops stay on there. I go over to my machine. I'm going to sew. I do, um, I think it's about three eighths because it's a little more than a quarter on my presser foot. I sew down here, down here, and down here. And I do this all in one motion. Okay. So when I get to this corner, I go ahead and turn this and put, put this up under there. And I go around the whole thing just like that um, because then you don't have to start and stop so much and there's no real reason to do that and you use less thread doing that so I'm gonna go sew this right quick and I'll be right back okay I got my front and back sewn together 
And you can kind of see what I meant about continuing because you can see that thread's connected there at the corners. I just sew all the way around and then I start my next bag or the front of my bag and did the same thing all the way around. Uh, that way I don't have to, uh, I don't have to keep starting and stopping and cutting. Um, it goes really quickly like that. Now when I did the club and I had a ton of them to do, I would do two fronts, two fronts and two backs. And then I would grab the two fronts off the back and then I would go ahead and start doing the corners and I, I kind of just kept a continuous thing going and add new bags as I went uh, until I got 10 of them done and that was how I did it <laughs> now I'm going to cut these apart up here but to do the box bottom we're going to open this up here okay so another good thing about having that sewn together it helps pull your corners together because um, we got to sew across this corner that's what makes your box bottom so this is the corner we cut out and it's only connected because I continuously sewed around the bag. And like I said, it helps you pull that corner together. Um, so then you fold it like this. You wanna make sure your seams are lining up. And you do, I do one to the left and one to the right. Um, just like if you were quilting, um, that reduces bulk in your seam. And then I'm just gonna sew across this whole thing. Same seam allowance, like I said, about three eighths of an inch. Um, I do backstitch at the beginning. I backstitch across the seam and I backstitch at the end. This just reinforces that corner um, and makes the bag a little bit sturdier. So I'm gonna go sew the corner for my front and back and I will be back to show y'all how to do the um, the banding. Okay, I've got my box bottom sewn and whatever way I turn my seams on this side, I turn them the same way on that side. It makes that seam lay a little flatter in your bag. Um, this one gets turned right side out. This is the front. Um, as you can see, it has a nice little box bottom on it. Um, and I'm gonna leave this one inside out for now. Um, when I put the two together, uh, that will make more sense. But first, I gotta cut out some banding or, uh, and usually I do really contrasting with the banding, but these bandings aren't super contrasting. So I'm just gonna go with what I got. So I'm gonna do two of these at the same time. So I have some that will be opposite colors. All right, I should have cut these out when I cut the other part out, shouldn't I? But this is for the banding. My banding is uh, 11, not 11, what am I talking about? Nine by three. Nine by three inch piece of fabric. Now, the reason I do that is because uh, this is 10 by 10 and I took in you may as well say almost an inch. No, it's less than an inch. What is that? Yeah, I've got, it makes the bag about nine and a quarter-ish after you put the seams on. So I won't, I don't want my banding to be the same length because it'll get, it'll be right in the hem. It'll overlap. So I cut it an inch shorter than what I cut the bag. Okay, anytime I put a banding on a bag, that's what I do. So first I'm gonna cut off an inch off of this. This is my three inch acrylic ruler. This is an Omni Grid one. This is not one I got from Arteza. I do have my little grippy dots on there though because that helps keep it to the table. And some people don't use their grid lines. And my grid lines are very worn out because I've used them so much for so many things. Um, but what's the purpose of having them if you're not going to use them? That's what I say. Um, now, since this is a three inch ruler, I'm just gonna lay it right like that and cut my three inch strips. Just like that, because I need two per bag. I can get three 
singles out of each a 10 inch strip. Now, I save these little one inch strips too for quilting purposes. <laughs> I save everything. Um, not as much as I used to, but all right. So I'm going to use uh, these two for this bag and I'll have two coordinate ones for another bag and then one bag will have opposites. That will be fun. Now I do have to iron the ends. So you would turn these over and I do not measure this. I just do, it's probably a half inch overall. It's a quarter inch, quarter inch. I've been doing it so long that that's how I do it. And I hit it with an iron and then I will top stitch over it. Sometimes I use a zigzag, sti zigzag stitch or a fancy stitch uh, just to give it a little pop on the ends. Uh, but you do have to turn in this end to keep your, uh, your ends from fraying on your banding, okay? Um, when I used to do the Mini Maker Club and I made a bunch of, a ton of these, I would actually cut out a whole nine inch strip of fabric and iron in the whole end and sew down both sides and then cut them. <laughs> it just made it so much faster when I had a bunch of them to make. So um, I'm gonna go iron this right quick and go ahead and top stitch it and then it will get folded in half like this and I'll hit it again with the iron and then I'll show you how I, I put it on the bag okay okay I've got my banding completed I did a little fancy stitch on the end just be careful when you start and that it's not doing this really detailed stitch on the end it gets it'll get hung up in your machine um that's why i used to like when i would do these stitches for the club i would cut a whole length of fabric that just makes it work so much better all right so and i like i said i did the ends under you can do a regular top stitch if you want then i just fold it in half just like this okay now these go on the exterior of the bag And I, you can measure this if you want to. I've been doing this so long. I just center it right like that. And you can clip it if you want to or pin it. And then you put the other one on the other side. I will just take this to the machine like this. And I will take my, so I can sew in, a, in the round. I'm going to stitch around this whole edge uh, about 3 eighths of an inch from the edge. I'm going to use a 3.5 length stitch versus my 2.5 that I used to sew this together. That's a longer stitch and I do this because it's easier to pull out if I forget, for example, to put my tag in, which is I also put my tag in it during this step. It gets folded in half and I just tuck it in there and it gets caught uh, and I trim off any excess because I don't always stamp them very centered but that's okay um, so and plus I'm gonna stitch this and I'm gonna stitch this to the interior then I'm gonna turn it inside out iron the top and put a final top stitch on so it gets stitched three times so there's no sense in having a smaller stitch all three times and like I said if I make a mistake it's easier to get out if I needed to okay so I'm going to sew on this banding and I'll be right back again. I would show y'all on the machine. Um, if anybody ever wants me to show them directly on the machine what I'm doing, I can do that. It's just I have to move my camera each time. So I feel like this is something that you can understand by me showing you what I did. But uh, y'all let me know if, if you can't, okay? Okay, I've got my banding sewn to the outside. I did put raw edges together. Folded side is this way. Um, there is my tag right there. Um, you can also put your tag in the side seam if you prefer. I used to do that. I just, I forgot it more than I do when I do this. <laughs> so that's why my tag is up there. All right, now I've got to put this inside here so inside the interior but first 
I put on the opposite side that my tag is on, I put a little ribbon tab. Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. And I forgot my little, my little grip. Hold on. So I fold it in half just like this. This is three inches. Three inches is a measurement I use a lot when I cut things for my tags and everything. It's just, I count in threes all the time. That's just my thing. All right, so I put it about in the middle. Again, I don't measure these. Uh, you can measure this if you want. Um, I've been doing this long enough that I've, I'm have i fairly good at eyeballing it. <laughs> so I put it here on the side opposite of my tag. That's just the way I do it. I put me a little crip, a crip, grip there, a little, why can't I say this? Clip, wonder clip, that's what it is, right there. And then I kind of bunch it up like this. I'm gonna stick it inside this bag, the, the interior fabric, okay? You wanna make sure right sides are facing for your bag, which is why I turned this one right side out after I finished sewing it. So then I'm gonna go line up my seams. I do them opposite like this. Y'all, I don't pin these. When I have bigger bags, I do because it falls apart easier. For me, I don't. You can use another clip or whatever you need to do. Um, mostly, I do it like like this. I get my seams aligned just like that. And then I will take this clip off and hold everything together because I need to hold that ribbon in place. All right. Um, make sure your band is inside the bag. Um, so now... I'm gonna take this back to my machine. You can see I've got nice little layers going on there. And I'm going to leave me a gap, probably about three inches or so, big enough to get your hand in there and turn it around, okay? Um, usually you can get it in there easier than you think you can. So usually about three inches is, is good enough. Is that about three inches? Yes, it is. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna back stitch and go all, so all the way around, back stitch. And this time I'm gonna be about half inch from the top. That is so I don't, you don't see my seam from where I attached my banding, okay? Slightly bigger hem for this, all right? So I will get that sewn in and I'll bring it right back and show you what it looks like. All right, I have my inside and outside sewn together. You can see right here, I'm hoping this is focusing, I can't see it as well. As I usually can, uh, where I back stitched and left an opening. Um, so to turn these, uh, now I have to turn it right side out. So I'll pull these apart like this. I feel like it makes it easier. Uh, and then there's my little opening. And then I just reach in there and I start poking my fabrics through that hole. See, just like that and poof. We turn it right side out. <laughs> Everything's right side out. It's magic, right? So now everything is sewn and it looks really cute. Um, we just have this opening now, right? Um, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna grab my iron. It's right behind me. I'm gonna show y'all how I do this. Once I have, make sure everything's out of the way. my iron right here all right so when I iron the top of this make it nice and crisp so I can put my top stitch on because this is gonna be seen okay so I kind of pull this fuss with it just a little bit I just iron it I don't iron my my ribbon because some of those ribbons will wrinkle and mess up when you iron them um, I turn it on its side I do that again this is how I iron them. Other side. I always do the side without the hole first. This also helps me find any little pieces of thread or something I might need to clip or, or get off when I'm doing this. I usually play some music or something fun to listen to while I do this part. Alright, and here we go. Here is, this usually, this usually tucks in really good by itself. You don't usually have anything to worry about. Maybe some little threads. And sometimes these threads where you did a back stitch 
might be a few loose ends. I go ahead and snip those. All right, now we can just iron this flat right like that, okay? So now the inside and the outside is nice and flat. I'm gonna go and stitch about an eighth of an inch from the top around the whole thing, and that's gonna finish it off really nice, and it's gonna close this hole for us, okay? Um, so this is why I say not to make it much bigger than that too. Um, and if you cut everything right, uh, you won't have any, you won't have to worry about missing that. You can kind of feel when you're sewing it, if they're together or not, they should stay together since we ironed them and it'll close it up and everything will be nice and closed and it'll have a nice finished top. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you how I put the drawstrings in. Okay, my bag is all finished. You see that stitch across the top there? Um, also, just a reminder to flip your little ribbon tab down as you're going along there so it gets caught in that and it, it lays it down. If, if you iron it, you won't have to worry about that. But like I said, my, the ribbon that I use is like uh, polyester or something and it will, uh, it will shrivel it up and that's why I don't iron it, okay? So, um, and something else I was going to show y'all, uh, I don't, I, I didn't use that on here because I've been sewing a long time. I just use a line on my presser foot. This presser foot here, it's really great when you need to get close to an edge. It has this little, uh, if I can get in the camera, this little piece here that you can line up right like that and get a perfect a perfect line every time, or mostly perfect. Um, so this is a press of foot you can use for edging like that, okay? Um, I have used it before. Mine is, there's something, there's so, I've used it so much, you can see, maybe you can see how it's worn on the bottom. <laughs> I haven't used it a long time because there was something that happened, it was getting hung up on things and it was, it was annoying me, so that's why I hadn't used it in a long time. But it is very useful when it's working properly. I think I just wore it out. All right, so this is how I put my drawstrings in. My drawstrings are Twill Tape. I ordered this from twilltape.com. That is actually a place that is here in Georgia. I believe they're out of Marietta, Georgia. They have all kinds of Twill Tape. They have good prices and fast shipping for me, especially since I'm in Georgia. So um, the way I measure my drawstring is I, my bag, I just base it on the cut size, 10 by 10, 10, it's gotta go around twice, that's 20, right? And then I, I want to have, um, no wait, that's not right, I've, I base it, I base it on my tab size, my band size, I'm sorry. Nine, nine plus nine is 18 inches. And then I want it to overhang three inches on each side. So <clears throat> that's six more inches. That's 24 inches. So these are always 24 inches, okay? And I use something called a bod bodkin. This right here, which is much better than a safety pin. I have used safety pins in the past. This little thing right here works much better. And to keep my ends from fraying when I do this, I fold this over and then I fold it in half again, just like that put these little grip ends on here slide this down and that's locked in place and anybody who's ever used a safety pin to do this sometimes the safety pin comes undone whilst you are doing it and it gets stuck in there <laughs> if this comes undone it doesn't get stuck in there you may have to start over again but it's less likely that this gets undone because you're pushing this away and it's constantly pushing this thing down so it's not as likely that it will come undone as a safety pin. So I just push this in just like that. Pull it on around. Now do it just like that. That makes it so much easier. This is something I would do when I watched TV at night when I had a ton of these to do. <laughs> All right, now we go on the other side. So we have a drawstring on both sides. I don't worry about how even it is until I get them all in there. 
Just try not to pull the other side in. I can take that off right like that. Uh, then I just line up my ends on both sides. Pull this. I do that to make sure they're even. Mm -hmm. I just do a little knot at the end. I like to hold the end so I can have a tail, so to speak. And this does fray, so I just pull out anything that's coming on loose and trim off anything that needs to be trimmed off. And then I have a little end. Now we do the other side. Do the same thing. Pull that tight. There we go. Trim it off. Trim, trim. All right, now I have my little mini maker bag. All right, um, that's it. That's how you make a little mini maker bag. That's also how you make a box bottom bag, if you ever wanted to know how. Um, now, some of my larger bags, they have a bigger cutout than the two inch. Um, some of them have a three inch, some it's different. It depends on the size of the overall size of the bag. If it's a bigger bag, I want a bigger box bottom. So that's something you have to account for when you're deciding on what side your bag is, size your bag is. Um, but the mini maker bag is just an easier one to make. It's fairly popular. People use it for cakes and all kinds of things. Um, so like I said, these will be up in the shop. I'm hoping to have a shop update by the end of the week. Um, this is gonna post on Friday. So hopefully um, by the time you see this, there'll be some new things in the shop. I'm working on a bunch of other things. These are not the only ones I'm putting in there. Um, I have a bunch of other fun things coming up. So just uh, check those out. And um, if you have any questions, let me know down below. Um, and I will see y'all in the next video.